document right now because we're going to have that all later. So uh, all we needed to discuss was uh, several change orders from the Senior Center. Uh, we had an administrative meeting last Friday with myself, David, David, and John uh, to discuss the Senior Center and the change orders with the OPM and engineers. So we'll be reporting on that at a future date. Okay next open meeting. Uh, but we have four change orders, I think. It's number 13, which are for cost to install custom truss hangers at steel beams as required. Oh, wait, that one? No. Was that? Where's Jennifer? Was that one? That was a note for you That's, to read later. That one is, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Not that was that what the post right it was for. <laughs> okay, so costs associated with a, uh, removal of the asbestos containing material. That is number 8R2, and that's $53,460.19. That was for six truckloads of asbestos containing material. Um, It came in under. Do you want to do them separately or else? We could do them all together. Then there is cost to provide additional framing, and that's number 27. And this one isn't there yet. Then <laughs> there was one more. Let's see. Sorry. Sal continue while we did that one. Oh yeah, thank you, Jane. That's the email. Hazmat removal. Additional framing at the south, the north and south gable walls. And this was one, it's a $5,800 change order, but the, that we are paying for but the architect is compensating us some money for rework on this. This was discussed at our meeting. Then we have additional framing between the dining room wall and the HVAC chases. This is line number 37 for $13,196. We discussed that at the meeting. And then we, so those are three change orders that we'd like to approve tonight. And then we have one more item that isn't a change order, just a uh, authorization to proceed and negotiate with the contractor. So the two thousand dollars or whatever, that's just our share. Uh, so the contractor's picking up the piece, and then yeah, the two's right. not being further offset by the contractor. Correct. Okay. Correct. So what we discussed, one of the things was, the architect is willing to pay for some rework portions that we have to do. Got it. And we are paying for the materials that would otherwise be needed mm -hmm. to do that. So, you have I do. I'm going to hold that one aside right now because these are change orders we want to approve. So, so we have a motion to approve line items 20, 36, and 37. Any further discussion? Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we have one more line item number 44, and this was to add nine bollards due to adjustment in the grading design. Um, basically, we were originally going to have the sidewalk on the south side of the building that was elevated, normal curb height, but looking at the site doesn't really make as much sense to do that. So we want to add these, have the, that grade match the rest of the senior center grade. And in order to do that, we need to add nine more of these decorative bollards in that area. Um, yeah, just it's like a public safety thing. And we are just giving Author, authorization to the OPM to negotiate with the contractor, but a ceiling of $12,273.70. And uh, my understanding is part of that change is uh, to have the sidewalk level with the parking lot to eliminate the trip hazard as well. Uh, yes. So that way there was not sand yeah. trying to step down from which it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've tried to do the most of the building. Right. Just Visual edges like that are harder on students as we go. Yep. There 
I haven't had a chance to check my email. Can produce it then? Sure. Well, here, why don't we vote on this one? Motion to approve this one. Uh, Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. What was the last one? I, I, the last one is number 48, and it's cost for changes for the removal exterior And so, here, I, that one was right, I thought that one was in here. That was, um, did I put it over here? Right here. So, steel supports, hinges, and hardware. So basically, in the original design, this was a panel that was just kind of a plug, let's say, and then talking with the contractor and everything, they were like, realistically, something like that, you're going to need a special lull or, you know, some kind of lift to get up there and remove that panel if you ever want to access this HVAC equipment. Why don't we add some hinges, add some extra framing on the outside and make it more of a hinge door so that, so that it's easier to get it out of the way in order to put the HVAC equipment in it or get HVAC equipment in and out of there in the future because all the HVAC equipment's up in the ceiling. So. So it looks like it's miscellaneous metals, door hardware, Simpson screws. And I don't know if this is the final. Yes, that is the final. He said they negotiated and that's They've gone back and forth. Okay. So yeah, that's number 17 and it's $2,679.88. Um, we, can, we can do that one or we can wait until another night to do that one. This one would be good to do soon just because of the framing, but, you know. Do I wait on that one to talk with John and Joyce just to, since we didn't talk about that? Yeah, that one hasn't come up before. We could, we could, uh, we could just wait. I think we need. <laughs> Is it next week or two weeks? Before. Yeah, we meet right before there, so. Yeah, that's fine. That yeah. yeah, that way they can be in on it. Okay. All right. So we're all set. We're not going to adjourn right now. We're just going to keep going, but you can pause. Sure, yeah. So uh, in the administrative meeting, we talked uh, with the, the OPM, and it was made uh, clear that I would publicly apologize to them for uh, the Whole hostage comment that was misdirected because uh, he made it clear that at no time have any of the change orders that, that we have reviewed been showstoppers. And he said he's never once tried to convey that to the staff. Board. And so uh, I guess the information we were getting was coming from the GC and the subs who obviously want to get done and get moving. So they're giving a different narrative than what the OPM is giving us. And he said that going forward, if there is anything that's a showstopper, um, he'll inform Christian and the entire select board so that we know that it's actually a showstopper rather than the kind of uh, game of telephone that we were getting uh, bad information. So um, I'll give him credit. He did push back uh, on some of these change orders. And he also did negotiate some compensation from the architect and the engineering firm uh, due to their mistakes. Yeah. So I just wanted to give credit where credit was due and uh, make sure that everyone knows that he is going back with that. Okay. And a lot of the change orders that come up are things I kind of described this in the meeting is there's a lot happening below the surface, the OPM and the contractor, and as you know, things come up, they bubble to the surface, they come to us, and it might look like, you know, it's just getting passed along, but there's a lot of betting between when the contractor gives it to the OPM and then we see it, so. Right. So they're doing it. We were, um, the agenda item is for updates on all three projects. Oh, yeah. So, um, not that they're significant updates, but on the library building project, um, it looks like, you know, they're, they're at a point now where they're working on a 
uh, bringing in the water and fire suppression. Uh, so that's moving along. And other than that, I haven't heard any uh, major issues. So, so far, so good. I'll fill in for Joyce's update. Yeah. <laughs> Fire station groundbreaking last night. Yeah. Good turnout. Um, she almost missed the dirt pile with her shovel full of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, everything went well. So I guess the, supposedly the project is back on track for the July opening of the original schedule. Yeah, it looks really far along, you know? Yeah. It's good. It's exciting to see them all come together. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll just pause now until 7. We have, we have Oh, okay. On the cemetery project, there are a couple of extra days that need to be um, uh, restored. Uh, so there's a change order from the Minister of the uh, Wild Card. Are you seeing here today? Uh, I'm not seeing anything. Do you still have that change order? I have it. I have it right here. Well within budget. $1,500. $1,500. Town previously approved 23,000 from CPA funds, and the current approved work totals 11,400. So it's well within the budget. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Aye. Anything else? We'll just pause until seven o'clock and then we'll get going with the regular meeting. Thank you. Hello and good evening everybody. Going to get our special town meeting warrant review um, public forum underway here. Call this meeting to order. Uh, so here I, okay here we go. So welcome and thank you. <laughs> Just, uh, I was just going to introduce myself real quick. If anybody doesn't know, I'm Christian Stanley. I'm the select board chair. Up here right now, we have David Nixon, the town administrator, Molly Keegan, and David Phil, who are both select board members. We're expecting our other two select board members tonight, John Muscovitz and Joyce Chungalo. But I know they were, at least Joyce was attending a, uh, a wake tonight, so she was expected to be a little late, but she'll be here. I also want to thank all the municipal employees, volunteers um, that are here tonight. Uh, had a lot in the crowd. Amy's here from the finance committee as well, so if we have any questions regarding finance, director met you, Amy. Uh, and then the school for having us here tonight, and setting up the room and hosting us. Thank you. We go to the next slide. I'm slow at turning these. So just to set a few of the ground rules, uh, the intent of this forum is to provide voters with an overview and context for the special town meeting, improve voters' understanding of individual warrant articles, and offer voters an opportunity to ask questions. Um, this isn't town meeting, so you can't get up and really speak for or against an article. If you have a specific question, feel free to ask it. But it's not town meeting where we get up and start really um, pet petitioning for an article. Um, so we're not gonna be taking any votes. We're not providing any group or individual the opportunity to advocate for a particular article or speak against any article. Uh, we did hand out the uh, public hearing directions. So refer to those uh, if you have any questions. Uh, and please remember that the special town meeting is on Thursday, November 7th at 7 p.m. So, Article 1, General Fund Budget. This is in David's wheelhouse, so I will let him take over. Thank you and good evening. Uh, the first uh, article of the special town meeting warrant amends the general fund budget. Uh, this is uh, a planned amendment. It will take uh, free cash, which was not available at the annual town meeting, and apply it in a way that's consistent with the select board's free cash policy. In addition, we'll be making adjustments to certain departmental budgets that are in line with the select board's priorities for public services. 
Uh, the, first of all, we're going to be supporting all the spending that we agreed to at the annual town meeting. There's no budget cutting going on or program cutting uh, in this uh, revised budget. We have some contracting obligations that need to be funded. We have uh, three departments where there are transitions. The Human Resources uh, Department, which is new. We're, uh, apparently, we're going through some successful interviews right now, so we expect that person to be joining our team very shortly. Senior Services, we had a replacement, which we have just successfully completed. And then we have a planned retirement inspection services. So those those budgets have to be adjusted in order to take into account those changes. We have some reorganization of the administrative support in Town Hall for Human Resources, Board of Health, and the Town Clerk. We also have the reorganization of divisions within the DPW to enhance services, and building maintenance, cemetery maintenance, and highway operations. And then because we got a AAA bond rating, um, the uh, amount of interest that we had expected to pay in uh, the annual town meeting can now be redeployed because of our lower interest rate to pay down principal, and that's about $52,000. Uh, so that would be saving money twice, that we will be able to spend less on interest now, and we can pay down more principal, so that's less interest that we'll be paying later. So that's our info one. Article 2 will handle the enterprise fund budgets. There are three enterprise funds. There's Hadley Media, there's the Water Division, and there's the Sewer Division. And we are in very much in the same way as with the general fund budget. We're uh, using enterprise fund reserves to mitigate the imp impacts on those water and sewer rates. And we're making adjustments that are in line with the select board's priorities for public services, mainly contract obligations, and increased services as required by the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection for both water and sewer. Are there any questions on Articles 1 and 2? With that, I will turn it over. I think the next person coming up is going to be Ms. Keegan. Every uh, fall, we try to transfer, uh, every town meeting, rather, we transfer uh, money from unproductive our articles where the project is done and the funds are no longer needed. Um, a little bit of surplus. We have two types of articles. One is one are cash articles, and then the other ones are borrowing authorizations. So we can return 3,910 cents in cash back to the original buckets from which this, was, uh, uh, this came. And for borrowing authorization, we can uh, return uh, $17,838.76. This helps clean up the chart of accounts and reduces the amount of reporting that we have to do to the SEC for borrowing that's no longer needed. So this is a housekeeping article. It has no impact upon tax rates, sewer rates, water rates, or any other rates. Now, Ms. Okay, Article 4. Uh, this is something that should be familiar to those of you who come to town meeting before. Uh, this is an article to transfer monies into the Capital Stabilization Fund. Um, this is still under review by the Finance Committee and the Select Board. Uh, the amount is going to be determined once we have a final certification of free cash um, by the Department of Revenue, which um, we're hoping to have soon. But the purpose of the article is to maintain a capital stabilization account for future capital needs. Um, so this, there's no impact on taxes or utility rates in this regard. Okay, Article 5 is the fun one always at a special town meeting here. It's our capital uh, uh, authorization for the year. So I 
guess I will just run through all these items. Uh, I don't know if you, everyone has the handout, but I'm looking at Article 5, and we'll go through them. I can kind of pause between them, and if you have a question, maybe just raise your hand and we can address it right then instead of waiting until the end of all of them. So, uh, basically, let's see. So, so I'll just start them off. So the first one, first two are from the water reserve fund. So these are water related. Uh, we have fire and water hydrant markers, as well as the DPW Mount Warner well field assessment. Questions? Uh, then Hadley Media, we have Hadley Media equipment, $15,000. That would come out of the Hadley Media Reserve Fund. Now we are have several here in which we would be borrowing within the levy. So for these items, we would be um, purchasing them, but borrowing within the levy. So there would be no impact on ta taxes. That's as things go off our level of borrowing, we can borrow against new items. So that would be these items. So the first one is uh, select board computers, but really that's town hall computers. Uh, $5,750. We have a police cruiser. That's a new one. It's $58,000. I believe it's a hybrid. So that's kind of a new exciting thing this year. Uh, we have police cruiser cameras. So these would be, we uh, received a uh, grant from the state uh, for police body cameras. Now this would be for all the police cruisers in Hadley to have cameras as well. So police could wear body cameras as well as having them in the cruisers. Um, then we have one that's, that's kind of standard police parts, ammunition and training. This is one that comes up every, every year or two, every three years, sorry. Because it is a capital item and that's how we do capital. It's just our standard way of doing it. Kind of the way it's always been done. I think it's a good question, but that's just kind of the way it's always been done. Having those items in there. I, I, Chief, do you have anything you can say to that? Why this is in uh, capital as opposed to the operating budget? The first time that I put it in, I was just told to put it in capital. It was over the $10,000 mark, so that's where we put it. Yeah, I which that would make sense if it's over that 10000 then it goes to capital. Uh, so, proceeding on here, borrowing within the levy. Oh, another question, I'm sorry. Can you go to the mic real quick? Because uh, it'll pick it up on uh, Hadley Media. It's just, I think, is that our only mic right there, John? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, just come over here real quick. I'm sorry. trying to get a workout in, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then just say, you can just say your name and. Sure, I'm, my name is Jim Wallace, I'm the 28th Ministry. Okay, yeah. In Hadley, obviously. Um, breaking down each of those items, police pots, pots, ammunition, and training, um, do they exceed $10,000 each? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, and in my experience, things like pots and ammunition, typically is uh, consumables and wouldn't be considered capital. The definitions may be different here, but I'm just used to those things being consumables and not capital. Yeah, yeah, that's a point well taken. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so next item, if that's it for the, the ammunition. Uh, we have uh, fire OSHA equipment. $25,000. Uh, this is, you know, it's new that fire and police departments have to comply with OSHA. So this is capital items related to complying with OSHA in the, in the fire station and on the fire trucks. Uh, then we have DPW gas pump repairs, $30,000. Uh, DPW locks at town hall. 
uh, $20,668. This would be a new key system to get into Town Hall and be able to track who's going in and out, kind of more of an electronic system instead of a key that God knows how many people have. So, trying to work on security. Go ahead. Uh, DPW is is building maintenance. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Martin Vega. So on the uh, upgrades to Town Hall, they're going to install an elevator. There is an elevator there. There's not an elevator there. It's a yeah. lift. Yeah. That would be an upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. There. No, we're not installing. We don't have that in the plan right now. To have okay. An elevator installed. Just asking. Yeah. Thank you. No. Then, still borrowing with them the levy, the school parking lot. Uh, this is paving a portion of the parking lot. This is for the school, Hopkins Academy, uh, going east uh, out of the parking lot, kind of from the parking lot up to Middle Street, paving that portion. Then we have uh, Board of Health IT. This is some computers and I believe software for the Board of Health. Uh, town hall counters. This is continuing with the slight renovation we did with town hall, adding some counters probably in the assessor's office. And I don't know if we're replacing them in the collector's office. Does that, that encompass that? Then we have town hall basement conditioned room. This is to provide more storage space at town hall that we can store things in the basement and uh, they'll be conditioned so it would be low humidity and those kind of things. Then we have the, now we're moving on to the debt excluded borrowing. So these items require a two thirds majority vote at town meeting and then they will go to a ballot vote and that ballot vote would be, I believe now, when would we have that, January time? It would be 90 days from town meeting. So it'd be next year before we'd have the, the, the official ballot vote on these items. First one is the fire, and, and these are debt excluded, so basically these would have, these would add to the overall tax rate. So an increase in taxes to afford these. First thing is the fire emergency generator, $105,000. This is a replacement of the existing generator at the Hadley Public Safety Complex and would be benefit both police and fire. Then we have the file, fire first vehicle extrication equipment, AKA the Jaws of Life. That would be replacing our current Jaws of Life as well as airbags that the fire department uses to move cars and that kind of thing. Uh, on here as well, we have DPW double drum compactor. This is a, a Last year, we voted in to have a hot box to fix the roads, um, all the potholes and that kind of thing. This would be an accessory to that, let's say, where we could roll those areas and fix the roads as needed. Then we have DPW mower for the common. I believe this is just kind of replacing what we have. It's at the end of its useful life. Then. For the school, we have a new school bus for $120,000. Then we have school IT technology for $100,000. And that would be for computers, um, the, the, I forget what they're called, not whiteboards anymore, but the boards they have that interface with the computer and all that kind of stuff. Smart boards. Thank you. Uh, then we are looking at borrowing from sewer receipts and so these items would be voted on and then debt exclusion no just a pure town meeting vote paid for out of sewer receipts. oh paid for out of sewer receipts but it would be borrowing not just a straight pay for it yes go ahead yeah sure Edwin, Edwin went to school, 116 Stockbridge. The one, two, three, four, five, six items that you just mentioned that required debt excluded, 
What's the difference between exclusion and excluded? Yeah. Uh, yeah, is that just a typo? I think that's just a typo, yeah. What, what, what will that do to my tax rate? We have those numbers. Do you have those, Dave? Sure. First one is for $105,000 for the emergency generator at the public safety complex. That emergency generator that we have now dates back to 1993. It's original with the building. It's old. It's failing. We don't have parts for it. Can't get parts for it. Um, so this is a high priority of the fire department and the police department. Um, borrowing for a five-year period. Uh, the average single family home is expected to pay $7.50 per year for five years. What about the percentage? And the percentage would be 1.8%. Um, that's, that's just for the generator? That's just for the generator. Moving right along, $35,000 for the uh, uh, Jaws of Life. Again, a five-year borrowing, uh, $2.50 for the average single-family household, and that works out to 0.6%, so less than a penny. Is that per year? Or per, per year for five years. Thank you. And by the way, the FY 2019 average single-family Household is that value that three hundred twenty-four thousand nine hundred dollars. So the double drum compactor is sixty thousand. Five-year borrowing that's expected to cost the average single-family household four dollars and twenty-eight cents for five years per year. And again, that is 01 percent increase. The mower for the town common, $30,000, uh, $2.14 for five years, and that's 0.5%. School bus, $120,000, uh, borrowing for five years, it's expected to cost the average single family household $8.57 per year. And that's point, that's 2%. I think that's 2%, that's 2%. Sorry, sometimes the decimals throw me off. Uh, kind of the IT debt exclusion, $100,000, uh, $7.14 per year for five years. And that's 0.17 percent. No, no, All right. See, I told you I had problems with decimals. It's 1.7 percent. Thank you. Thanks for catching me. And that's a cost per year. 1.7 percent per year. Per year. For five years. Thank you. Okay. And then the sewer um, uh, borrowing would be within the sewer rates, and that uh, would not impact the taxes. Any other questions? Thank you. You're quite welcome. Uh, Christian, I think you were uh... Okay, any more questions on those? Good. Yeah, 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 okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So now moving on, borrow from sewer res receipts. So what was the term borrowing on these? Was it five years? Well, so five years out of sewer receipts. First one is DPW expansion of sewer plant capacity study for $50,000. So it's a study to look at the plant capacity. Then we have 
uh, $30,000 for seal coat sewer plant road surfaces. Um, and this is some maintenance that needs to be done to the facility. And then we have a new uh, truck for water, a Ford F-350 for $90,000, and that would be borrowed from water receipts. That's over five years. Is the truck five or seven? Five, five, okay. Question? Oh yes, go ahead. Do you mind just coming up here? Is this Michael? Yeah, Town Hall has been working hard to get departments to do to do multiple year uh, capital budgets. So are these all in alignment with the capital budgets, or are these sort of the things that uh, come along unexpectedly or without uh, planning and have to be covered? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, no. I'll, uh, that's a good question. A lot of these were expected. I know, especially the generator. That's been one that's been on there for a couple of years, and we've been expecting that. Um, I would say some of the DPW stuff might be a little bit unexpected, but we have a new director, so you know, different ways of doing things. There was a capital plan, but just different approach to it, so adjusting that accordingly. Um, but most of the items were expected, I would say. And we did trim down you know, the requests as well in the capital committee so that we, were, we thought this was a reasonable number, and I think we were pretty happy with where we ended up um, with these requests. Yep. Any other questions? Oh, the capital plan is posted online too if you'd like to look that up. Okay, so Article 6, I lost my sheet. Who's next? I think it's David. Bill? the article but I'll give you a little bit of background on why this is back on town meeting floor. Uh, the select board has been working to sell North Hadley Village Hall for probably more than a decade or at least figure out what to do with North Hadley Village Hall. Um, we at our last select board meeting we voted unanimously actually to sell it to uh, Mr. Rhombus here, the Hadley resident, uh, for redevelopment. As part of that transaction we had to uh, basically, nobody wanted North Hadley Village Hall without the associated ball field next to it. It, it. it greatly limits what can be done on the site. So, ideally, and we're waiting on town council um, for a final opinion on this, but ideally we'd like to sell the ball field while maintaining Article 97 protections on that ball field, meaning that although the ball field will be in private hands, it will be protected as recreational space and stay open as green space. So that's our primary goal as a select board. Um, plan B would be to have to petition the state legislature to remove the Article 97 protections from the ball field so that way the redevelopment could happen there at North Adley Village Hall. Um, Mr. Ronmus has agreed to leave it open and uh, even possibly move it into uh, Chapter 61B protections if that was required at some point down the line uh, so that way it could be preserved as green space. So this is kind of something to have in our back pocket uh, if we need to go to the state legislature in order to make the redevelopment plan happen. Randy Iser, um, is it possible, if if any of this works out with the state or whatever, to sell a minimal amount of the land with the building that would satisfy the purchaser's needs and keep the rest of the land open as it currently is, so that you know, people will be more more satisfied with that end result. So. I will say that um, 
under the, the plans that we kind of approved and moved forward with last week, uh, the entire parcel was included in that, in that plan in order to make things work. But um, this gives us permission to remove all of the Article 97 protections. I think that if, and correct me, if uh, we only had to remove a portion of that to make something work, or a petition to say move 10, remove 10 feet of that or some portion of that in order to make the project work, I think that's something we consider. I'm not speaking for the rest of them, but I think it's something we'd consider. Um, but in order to have the flexibility to make this transaction happen, I think we need the, the authorization just to have that ability to remove the Article 97 protections. Denise Barstow, can I ask the uh, zoning board a question? Is that allowed? Plan board. Plan board. Plan board. People are there? Yeah, okay, cool. I don't, I've never been to one of these, so I don't know how it works. I'm not here to debate this. Yeah. No, I know. Um, based on the amount of apartments that are to go into this building, how much parking do they need? Um, and will we need to cut into the Article 97 land to have the appropriate amount of parking? Bill. Bill DeWire from the Planning Board. We don't have a specific uh, residential parking requirement. So that is something that would probably have to be negotiated out when the uh, developer or the proposed property owner goes to get his variance, which he will need. Uh, that would be from the Zoning Board of Appeals. The uh, building can be converted to two dwelling units. He proposes converting it to three. He will need a variance to do that. And presumably, as part of the variance process, the ZBA will work out how much parking is required to support three apartments. But the bylaw is quiet on that. Alan Weinberg, 108 Bay Road. But first of all, I'm thrilled that we've gotten to this point where it actually is a possibility of saving the hall. And and I also want to congratulate Mr. Hieronymus for coming up with a creative idea. My only concern is on the Chapter 97 ball field, and my understanding of, of the need for him to have some control or use or ownership of that is for parking for, uh, not the apartments, but for these occasional uh, music venues, which is great. I'm all for that, it's wonderful. My only concern is the church also uses the ball field for parking, and it would, to me, it would, it would only, only fair thing is to have some arrangement, uh, I'm sure it can be worked out, but I just want to highlight it, that whatever arrangement this is, whether he owns it, whether we own it, that we continue to allow the church to, to for overflow parking for their events as well. And I think if that all fits together, it'll be a wonderful thing for the town. Uh, I won't speak for Mr. Grimus, but I'll say that uh, what was presented to the select board was that uh, they'd be willing to work out um, some sort of agreement with uh, the church and to keep the area open for outdoor use, for recreational use, whether it's picnic tables or grills or something along those lines, what was mentioned. Okay. Next. Article 7. This is granting a conservation restriction to Kestrel uh, for the uh, 336 acres off of Bay Road and Tremura Road. Uh, a little bit of background on this. This has been in the works for probably eight months or so. Uh, we had a, a group of, um, I think it was eight people from the town to work with, uh, with, with Kestrel and um, Conservation Commission as well to negotiate the terms of this conservation restriction, what activities would be permitted, what activities would be prohibited. Um, we had a, a wide range of uh, political and recreational opinions in this group, and um, this is what we came up with. Basically, um, this is a, a conservation restriction that uh, will take the politics out of what uses are permitted on this land indefinitely. So under the, the current arrangement, whatever select board that is 
up here at the time could permit or prohibit different activities on this land. Uh, under this new arrangement, the conservation restriction clearly lays out what is allowed on that uh, land forever. So regardless of what political or recreational opinions are up here, if something is stated in this conservation restriction that's allowed, we can't prohibit it or the other way around. So. I'll give you a broad overview. It's pretty long. Uh, we'll have a handout at, at, at town meeting to uh, go into details. But basically, um, snowmobiling on uh, designated snowmobile trails, hiking, mountain biking, hunting, uh, fishing, uh, basically any any recreate bird watching, any of those recreational uses that are that are typical. Um, also reserves the, the use of the town water facilities that are on the property, the reservoirs, pipes, things like that, that uh, it doesn't inhibit the town from conducting water operations in any way. Uh, it allows logging, if at some point we want to do that under a forestry management plan. Um, actually, if I could have Paul come up and kind of, sure. real quick, from just to, Paul from Kevin. Yep, just from Kestrel Trust, just to kind of hit sure. anything I missed. I, 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 think, I think David covered it. Um, why don't you tell everybody out in the world what Kestrel Trust is all about? Because some people may not know. Okay. Well, I'll let Paul actually talk about sure. what Kestrel so, Trust is, so I don't... So we're we're the, the local land trust, and we conserve land throughout the valley, including Hadley. Um, uh, we, we both own land, and we hold conservation restrictions on land. So in this case, it would be holding a conservation restriction on And we work with um, we work with towns, we work with the state, we work with the federal government to, to make that happen through grants and by raising dollars and, and uh, um, through other means. So just to be clear, this land remains in town ownership. We're not selling the land. We're just granting a conservation restriction to Kestrel. And uh, Paul, did I miss any of the major activities that are allowed or prohibited from? No, I think you, I think you captured them all. It's, it's you know a wide range of recreational uses. Um, uh, along with sustainable forestry, um, the emergency use of the reservoirs up there for emergency water supplies, uh, the town needs to use them for that purpose. Um, and uh, you know, there's some other rights that the town can put in a, a, a paved, paved universally accessible trail if they wanted to, they could convert, you know, put some community gardens up there. Um, so there's a, there's a lot, lot of possibility. Um, and the land's really being used for those purposes right now. A lot of those purposes right now anyway. So this, this guarantees that the public can continue to use the land for those purposes indefinitely, um, regardless of whatever future iteration of the select order of town politics and Yeah, um, it allows us to also leverage money to protect more land up there, do more conservation through state grants. Any further questions? Insurances, uh, Article Number Eight. Uh, the Hampshire Franklin Group Insurance Trust was able to contain Hadley's health insurance costs in the amount of ninety-three thousand eight hundred dollars in FY19. Not only did we achieve these cert cert savings, but the o OPIP actually used this figure in determining future liability costs. Under Massachusetts regulations, we are mandated to share a quarter of the savings with union employees, non-union employees, and active retirees. This shared portion can be in the form of a reduction of health insurance premiums that would be otherwise paid by the employees and retirees, or as an underwriting for health promotion events and trainings. The exact distribution of these funds is subject to discussion with bargaining units, non-union staff, and representatives of the active retirees. Mitigation sharing is governed by the provisions of Chapter uh, 801. A copy can be found on a link that we have there. So um, this is what we're doing. We're transferring free cash, $22,234, and transfer $590 from water reserves and transfer $626 from sewer reserves 
to fund the health insurance premiums uh, mitigation. One is just uh, Hadley Kids Inc. And I don't know if the school department wants to speak to that. Do you want to say? For several years, Hadley Kids Inc., a nonprofit organization, operated our after school or its after school program. It was completely independent of the school department and run by a nonprofit 501c3. The nonprofit had the Kids Inc., their board of directors, voted to dissolve um, their, their corporation or their nonprofit organization if uh, the school department could or would be willing to take over operating the after school program. Um, initially, this program was going to be run by Park and Rec, but um, it turned out that we're going to do it through the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and through the school department. And they have uh, reserves from their organization that they would like to gift for the specific purpose of enhancing and expanding out of school programming so that would be before school care after school care um, potentially summer care as an extension of this so this is for out of school time programming and it's a requirement that uh, the funds be gifted to that the that a gift such as this is voted on uh, at the town meeting. Uh, it is roughly, I believe, about one hundred thousand um, dollars. They haven't completed the dissolution process. There'll be some legal things that would need to happen, and uh, still, but I believe it's roughly a hundred thousand dollars. Thank you. And then our next four articles are CPA articles. I don't know if anyone's here from CPA to talk to them tonight. Oh, Edwin, do you, do you want to speak to them? I don't know if I can, but I will try. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can read them, but I didn't know if you guys wanted to speak to them. Yeah. You can go to the mic, or. Edwin Matusko, Vice Chair of the CPA Committee. Uh, Andy Morris Friedman, the chairman, was unable to attend tonight. I've, he asked me if I could fill in. I will try to. That's all I can do. I will try. Um, uh, article, article 10 is a transfer of $25,000 from the historic set-aside to the Hadley Cemetery Committee for the Preservation and Restoration of Historic Gravestones in Plainville Cemetery. Um, if there's anybody that wants to speak to that one, uh, if it's okay with you, if the petitioner can address it. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. I can ask questions. No. No, no. Hi, I'm uh, Alan Weinberg. I'm chairman of the cemetery committee. Can you hear me? Alan Weinberg, chairman of the cemetery committee. Okay. So we have five historic town cemeteries in Hadley, so dating back over 300 years old. Last year, we received money from CPA to fix uh, 50 plus gravestones up in the Hockenheim Cemetery. That work's almost done now, 99% done. And we also received uh, $12,000 to do a study of the other four cemeteries to see what needed to be done as far as restoring the gravestones. We received those studies and we were uh, going to, we were asking, we have asked the CPA for money to um, uh, do two of the cemeteries, Plainville. Uh, we're asking for $25,000 to do 45 stones and Old Hadley, 133 stones at a cost of $82,000. Uh, of CPA money. Um, so that's what we're asking the CPA to prove that. Do you want me to talk about the stone fence as well? Go ahead. Yeah. So the other article is the uh, $5,000 for a study of the uh, Hockenheim stone fence, which is in bad disrepair. It's a, uh, it's 
it's, it's also historic, it's a, a WPA project, built it back in the 30s. And uh, we need to figure out the best way of, of um, repairing or replacing that wall, so we want to hire some professionals to guide us through that process before we ask for money to fix that, that wall. So those three things are cemetery projects for this coming year. I will say that next year we'll be asking for CPA money to do the last two, which would be North Haddon and Russellville. Okay? Any questions? Thanks. Thank you, Robert. You're welcome. Um, that was an overview of the articles for the cemeteries, and we have an article uh, from the historic set aside to have the building committee for emergency repairs to preserve and restore the historic Russell School roof. And further, if the funds are not, oh, yeah, that's just a boilerplate article to put in so that you've got to use the money before it expires. Um, I don't know if there's anybody from the select board that wants to, or from the building committee that wants to. Uh, address these articles. But that that's what they're for. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This so Article Fourteen changes the water uh, rules or the water bylaws. To make uh, to allow a fifty dollar charge if the DPW has to or the water department has to do a manual meter reading after a certain amount of time. Uh, for the most part, all the meters in town are remotely read by radio frequency. Uh, they can be done from the, the street, and there's no need to access properties. Uh, what we are finding is there's a small number of people that have uh, not allowed uh, their meters to be changed out to modern technology, and it's quite expensive to send. Uh, water department personnel out to the houses. Uh, we're talking multiple hours of their time because of scheduling conflicts and people not showing up to allow access to the to the homes. So this will make it uh, allow a fifty dollar charge uh, fee to be charged. We have an article for the planning board, planning stormwater general. Uh, would you like to speak to that? Sure. Yeah. I filled the wire from the planning board. So, I know you've been wondering what MS4 stands for. Municipal Separate Sor Storm Sewer Systems. Uh, what we are being asked to do, well, we actually, we. It's a two-part article. We've had a zoning article to, uh, for stormwater management uh, in place for several years, and that was our first approach to complying with MS4. MS4 is an environmental protection agency program that is being um, applied to all communities that are basically in the watershed of Long Island Sound. So anybody whose drainage uh, gets down to Long Island Sound uh, is being asked to clean up their act by EPA. And in conjunction with the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, we have been presented with a proposed bylaw change. What we are doing here is in two parts. We are adopting a new general bylaw and, uh, and that is to replace the current zoning bylaw. Because MS4 deals with post-construction activities and deals with, it has a fairly broad scope, uh, it doesn't lend itself to being one and done planning board review at the construction phase. So we're taking it out of the zoning bylaw, we're putting it into the general bylaw, there are, I think, are about uh, six pages of uh, definitions and bylaw language, in addition to which there will be 30 plus pages of regulations that the planning board will adopt going forward. 
but uh, basically there is no fundamental change with what we're doing, the structure of what we're doing. We're not removing erosion and sediment control protection, we're just moving it to another part of the town bylaw set. <coughs> Am I still going to be able to dig a ditch? If the Conservation Commission will let you do it, probably. Okay. Uh, this really doesn't extend the reach of the zoning bylaw. It just takes what was in the zoning bylaw under Chapter 40A and moves it into the general bylaw. Right, right. Yeah. So that, that's, fun, that's the fundamental change in it. Uh, there are a list of exemptions in the text of the yeah. bylaw. But um, again, it also says explicitly that this is for a different purpose than conservation. And nothing in this bylaw will override or undermine the Conservation uh, Commission's uh, mandate, under, which comes under a different law. Do you want to do that out of that planning board article too? 16. Or is that the same? Article 17? 15 and 16 were they? That's, that was 15 and 16. Oh, that was. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the next and final article here is our uh, senior housing overlay map extension. Uh, I don't know if petitioner wants to say something regarding that. Uh, and please remember, if you have a question, feel free to ask a question, just not town meeting where we're going to speak for or against this project right now. So, is, 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 do you, you want to ask or want me to ask? Well, I'd like to know. Joyce is wondering if Mr. Dion is here tonight. He's, he is not here. Okay. So Right. I think for town meeting, we've got to petition the town moderator to move. I think this is just a public well, for tonight, yeah, I think you should just speak to it real quick. It's a public yeah. forum, and then I agree on town meeting night, you know, oh, great. should be here, so. But. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah, so just, uh, yeah, Mr. Dan will be here uh, for town meeting, but just for context and information, so uh, this is to extend northerly the senior housing overlay district onto a parcel of land. It's about a nine and a half acre parcel of land owned by Donald Dion. Um, the underlying zoning district is agricultural residential. It's the one on this map that uh, large. It's this parcel right here. Um, this is Middle Street. And it's this parcel right here, about nine and a half acres. Uh, according to the GIS, uh, the zoning layer on your GIS map, it actually looks like the senior housing overlay extends to about here. I don't know if that's just a function of the GIS map or if it actually extends to that point or if it actually uh, terminates at the bike path. So that's the rail trail right there. Um, but the warrant article is seeking uh, by two thirds vote to extend northerly so the existing senior housing, housing overlay district follows this rail trail, the bike path. It's to extend it northerly onto this parcel of land. Uh, and there have been some discussions about the type of development that would occur on that land if uh, it did pass um, at town meeting. Such as? Such as um, no more than 28 um, single family homes, so it would be a condominium similar to East Street Commons. And I think that uh, the petitioner and the developer would both be willing to put that in writing and agree to it. Um, you know, I, I think something similar happened with Siaglo's, Siaglo's property with the Lowe's development, um, and there was an agreement with the town that if the zoning amendment did happen, then um, a certain project would be built. And so I think similarly here, both the petitioner and the developer would be willing to enter into that agreement. What is the intended sale price of these properties? 
Um, good question. Um, from what Barry has said, probably similar to East Street Commons. Uh, if he can do it for less, he will. So probably 400. Sure. So I think the average over at East Street Commons is four hundred and forty thousand dollars. So something probably between three seventy-five and four seventy-five, I think, would be the target over there. Would you call that affordable housing? It is uh, not qualified on the subsidized housing inventory, so it wouldn't be the term, the legal term of art, affordable housing. Um, I think it may be deemed affordable um, because if you if you know the East Street Commons project, they're all sold out, and so there are folks who find that affordable if they're if they're buying it. If they were all sitting on the market, I would say no, it's not affordable. Sure. I don't, let me just take people in order. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just come up to the mic, maybe, and okay. state your name. Appreciate it. Al Weinberg, Bay Road. Two questions. One is, uh, is there been any thought about screening uh, from Newton Lane? Uh, screening the properties with the hedge or whatever fencing. And the other is, I don't know if, this, if you know the answer to this over the planning board does, whether or not duplexes could be allowed, you know, instead of just single family with two duplexes, which can be more affordable. Sure. Um, so I guess to take it in reverse order, yes, duplexes are allowed. I think the developer had seen in the East Street Commons project that they weren't that desirable. There are several over there, but um, folks typically, uh, most of the uh, purchasers are those folks looking to downsize but are used to their own space. And so having the single family allows uh, exclusive use areas around the perimeter and it, it just feels more like a standalone home. Not something, I'm not saying that he won't consider it if there's a market demand for it. And I think it's market driven uh, quite a bit. And to answer your first question about screening, uh, yes. So, not to get too far in the weeds, but the, the proposal would be to put a berm all the way around the property and to screen on this side of the property as well with a, it might be a three or four foot high berm, and then plant um, on the top of the berm. So, uh, like on this side here, there'd be four foot high arborvitaes on top of the berm, and, and the berm would go in first um, before any of the construction would take place. And, and the idea would be to keep the construction away you know, from these properties. I think we're looking at 50 feet is, uh, the developer has been trying to talk with the neighbors to find out what would be amenable. Um, and then um, to continue the berm around here. This is Maybe Mr. Dreyer will take it away from me, but this is, we will ultimately, if this is approved, there is still another approval process, which is a, a, a site plan review special permit with the planning board. And just let me ask, uh, there's currently on East Street, what looks like a berm, as you would describe it, it faces Route 9, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, and I think, I think the berm is similar to what we're talking about. I think the berm here would be, um, would have more plantings on it. Uh, there was a, a slide that we had shown, or there was a cross section that we had shown in the neighborhood meeting that showed the planting on each side of the berm and on top of the berm. So frankly, I think it is more substantial than what you'd see at East Street Commons. Okay. The current owner of the property is? The current owner of the property is Donald Dion. So Donald Dion is the petitioner, correct? That is correct, yes. Right. Um, the other question I have is, in the current Senior overlay. Does anyone here know the approximate number of acres that that covers? Yeah, from Spruce Hill to uh, the bridge, and then a little ways up uh, Bay Road uh, is uh, what I see as the present senior overlay. We can have that information. Okay, I'm just curious because there is a, obviously a. Seen the area right now. Um, and I think any, anything else would be speaking pro or con about this, so I, I think I'll let the rest go. Uh, I may have another question. So, Bill Dwyer from the Planning Board. Uh, I do want to clarify that 
What town meeting is talking about is not directly a, the design of any potential senior housing that might go on this site. Town meeting is being asked to rezone a piece of land at the request of the property owner. Presumably, after the property owner secures the rezoning, he may then enter into a contract with Mr. Roberts or someone else to sell the property subject to permit. Then the design comes to the planning board for a special permit for senior housing. Um, anything Mr. Roberts may have to say about design is based on his thoughts for what he would do if he is the successful bidder for this. But you're not approving Mr. Roberts' project. You are approving a change of use for a parcel of land. So I think it's important just to keep those distinct that uh, we get often talking about berms and uh, screening. You're really a little off track there. We want to keep it on that this is a change of use for a parcel of land. That's what town meeting is talking about. The individuals who are within the notice circle for the special permit have the particular interest in screening, hours of construction, things like that. Um, the town meeting as a whole really doesn't get involved in that level of permitting because, you know, I live, if I weren't on the planning board, I live five miles away, I really don't have much to say about what happens on that space as an individual. So that's why it's not really a town meeting issue, what the design is going to be like. Town meeting issue is what the use is going to be. Jonah Bruger, 21 Milwaukee Drive. Um, I do have a question about the senior zoning as it stands right now. Exactly how do we decide on where the zoning stops so that we're now deciding to extend it? After lengthy discussions, uh, including requests from people pretty much all over town to have the zone extend pretty much everywhere, the uh, planning board recommended and town meeting approved that the senior housing overlay district would be congruent with the village center overlay district. And there are a couple of things that went into that. Um, because these are structures are clustered together, it's the only uh, situation in which we allow uh, residential condominiums. We were concerned that they had to be on sewer rather than having a massive septic system. We also thought it would be good to have the housing located uh, near near the center of town where there is better access to public transit than there is, say, where I live five miles north of here. Um, we also worked on a philosophy of let's roll this out, let's see how this develops. And if uh, we do choose to expand it, if there is demand, we'll talk about expanding it. We uh, do say, in addition to the Village Center overlay, that you can have uh, use existing structures wherever located. We did that thinking that, me, gee, maybe North Hadley Hall could be converted into uh, senior housing. Um, the first, I'd say, four years, maybe five, of having the bylaw in place, we had zero interest from anyone. When we were, before we adopted the bylaw, we had four or five potential senior housing developers, and Mr. Roberts was not one of them. These are four or five others who were actively participating and trying to influence where the housing was going to be allowed. But that's the long story about why we picked the area we picked, it was already defined as the village center overlay, and um, it seemed to be a good place to put more housing, because historic development density was a little tighter than it is now. You could stop me if it's too controversial, but it sounds like this might be in the spirit of the original zoning, it's just an extension. What I, I will agree that this is not, this would not be considered spot zoning. This is an extension, uh, 
this is a viable in that sense as an extension of the original area. Uh, whether it um, is something that convinces town media or not, we'll see. Okay. Barbara Henderson. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify, there will be at town meeting a map of the, of the actual overlay district in the town so that people can see where this zone is on both sides of Route 9. Is that something you guys are planning on? Are, what are you guys planning on having at town meeting for presentation? Anything? Yes. And you are? Yeah. And that something like that? Okay. Okay, because I hear that, you know, there's lots of land for this kind of thing in town. The uh, zoning, zoning map's available online. But it's tiny. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's expanding. It's, is it at Town Hall? Uh, yes, in Building Inspector's Office. Building Inspector's Office. Okay, thank you. And what is, what is a GSI map? What's the G? That's yeah, a government... Yes. Geographic Information System. So if you Google Hadley GIS, 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 yeah. then they'll bring you in. Then there's a layer. Okay, yeah, you can go to the Hadley website and assessors, assessors maps. Page. Go to the assessors office. Go to the assessors page. Yeah, yeah. I want to look on, on my good monitor. Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. good. Okay. Okay. A a question arises. Um, the property is going to be sold, yes or no? It's yes. not up for debate right now. Okay, but no, what, what is up for debate is the extension of the senior zoning district and the density of the buildings in that district. So the question that I have is if it is allowed and we have a closer density, what will that do to the infrastructure, the sewer and water of the town of Hadley? Is that going to overflow it? If, are we going to kick into uh, something else that we're going to have to expand on later on? So that's the question that I have. Is what is it going to do to the infrastructure of the town of Hadley? You mentioned that, um, or Bill mentioned that it's going to be all on sewer. Yes. So will that have a tendency to <laughs> kick us over a, a limit where we're going to have to do something later on or in the very near future to expand the sewer system to accommodate other development in town? Yeah. <laughs> Having more sewer users would help and there'd be impact fees related to that, but I don't know plant capacity wise. Well, how much if we have 28 new houses? We can get that. Information. We could get that information for town meeting. Yeah. Why don't we get that information and we can have that available? Thank you. Or even yeah. Yeah. Any further questions? Okay. And I have a motion to adjourn. Or wait, we need something. Damn. <laughs> okay. Let's wrap it up here. Let's not forget special town meeting, November 7th, 2019, 7 o'clock, right here. Anything else? Yeah. Speak, you can use democracy and speak out then. Then we will allow you to say whatever you want, within reason. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. All those in favor.